Are you thinking what I'm thinking? That you can stop hugging me now? No, come on. Don't you want Purple Martin powers? Yeah, of course. Look how he moves. I can hardly wait to get up there with him. Wow. OK, here it comes. Oh, please make me a Purple Martin suit. Yeah, come on, please. I've seen the light, the purple light. Yeah, please. Oh, purple, please. Purple, please. Purple, purple please. please. OK, OK. ay ay you don't have to beg. Why wouldn't I? These birds are awesome, and I love the science of flight. Aerodynamics, wind pressure, lift. It's like an avian fighter jet. And these birds have got it going on. Give me some more observations. Wings are for lift. Tail moves like a rudder. Quick wing flaps to gain speed. Tuck wings for rocket speed. Spread wings. And tail to slow down and land. Right, right in, in front, front of us. us. Rose, that's not the purple Martin. It's not? No, it's not purple. It's black. But every other feature is screaming purple Martin. The face, the wings, the beak, the tail feathers. That's it. The feathers. I can explain this one with this. With a triangle? Yeah, Jimmy, it's a prism. Watch, sunlight is made up of different colors. We can't see them, but when you shine a light through the prism, it's refracted, meaning it splits and you can see the colors, like a rainbow. Some bird feathers can do the same thing. When little or no light is reflected, it looks black. But if you move or more light hits the feathers, it's refracted and produces color. Whoa! That's pretty purplish. Hmm, I'm seeing a lot of blue in that purple. Well, if it's called a purple Martin, the suit has to be purple. Sorry, no blue or green today. Huh? Is she serious? Or uh, just kidding? <laughs> Listo! Oh, who cares? Let's just activate Purple Martin powers! Check out these wings. Yeah, this is one slick suit. And jet black. Where's the color? You're standing in the shade. Get in the sun. Yeah, let's refract some light on this Martin power suit. Oh, yeah. I'm green. A green Martin. Wait a minute. I'm green, and so I'm still Chris, I think. I'm blue. I don't believe it. This is even better than a purple Martin. I'm a blue Martin. Uh, I'm a green Martin? OK, wait a second. I like the green part, but I'm not so sure about the Martin part. <laughs> Funny, bro. Any color Martins are awesome. OK, being a Martin, this is going to be one confusing creature adventure. Purple Martin's on the move. Wait up, bro. Follow those Martins! To the hover bikes! Come on, Chris. Oh, I mean Green Martin. Oh, boy. This is going to be a tough creature adventure. Come on, Green Martin. Let's stay on his tail. At least these powers are awesome. Look at all the purple Martins. I think maybe they're catching bugs over the river. Where are the bros? Let's see. Purple, blue, green. Follow that pattern. Purple, blue, green. Purple, purple blue, blue, green. This is the perfect hunting grounds for the purple Martin. Insects are hatching out of the river. And today it's mayflies. Whoa, out of the air. Off the surface. He takes a sip of water to wash it down. Wow. Oh, these powers are so awesome, you can't help catching insects. Cool. Uh, there, I heard you. You admitted it. Martin powers are cool. 
Yeah, well, the bird martin powers, I mean. Hey, check it out! Why are they all going over to the riverbank? Let's find out. It's a purple martin colony. This is rare. What do you mean, rare? There are so many of them. Well, yeah, they're colonial nesters. But it's very rare to find them nesting in natural cavities anymore. Check it out. Today, purple martins on the East Coast only nest in gourds and houses put out for them by people. Martin's right. He should be. They're talking about martins. Wow, purple martins are so nice. Like martins usually are. Oh boy, here we go. Look how they all get along, nesting so close to each other. Oh look, one's feeding a mayfly to a chick. Uh, he eats just like me. Hey, little buddy. Oh, naming you is gonna be easy. I'll call you. Oh no, don't do it, brother. Why not? It's perfect. Please, no! Martin Jr. Oh. oh! How much more of this can I take? I think that's a really good name. Hmm. I would have preferred Martinito. Hang in there, Chris. Hey, Martin Jr., where are you going? There's something happening outside. Guys, can you find out what's alarming the colony? On the cliff. Some kind of weasel. Yes, something other than an animal named Martin. You're right. That's definitely a member of the weasel family. Some kind of mustelid for sure. But what kind? Going in for a closer look to get an ID. Oh no, no. Please, no. Anything but that. <laughs> I don't believe it. No! What's wrong, Chris? It's a pine, Martin. Did you say Martin? Oh, brother. What? Another animal called Martin? This is my lucky day. Hanging out with the other Martins of the creature world. Something tells me this is not going to be my day. Come on, Chris. And now, we have a new creature mission. Let's go! Well, I can't resist a creature mission. Wahoo! Let me see. What would I like for dinner tonight? Oh, I feel like seafood. Lobsters rarely get that big anymore. It's lobster season. Hmm. If anyone has a nose to find the last largest lobster, I do. It must have floated down here someplace. Unless the current grabbed it. There! Yeah! My creature power disc! In a lobster trap! Okay, which disc is it? Let's bring the trap to the surface. Must get creature power disc! Wait! Let's miniaturize! Miniaturize! a big one. <gasps> Not as big as that one. That must be the last largest lobster. Let's follow him. We can't let him get away. Maybe we shouldn't be this little with that big guy around. Big lobsters eat smaller lobsters, you know. <gasps> We're small size. Let's get back to big size. And large. Back to real size. Let's go. Wait, don't forget the miniaturizer. If you leave it around, who knows what giant monster sea creature you could end up making. 
You're right. Thanks, Koki. Can you imagine what a monster sea creature, a giant lobster, would be? Uh, it's not gonna happen today. But right now, our mission is to find that lobster we just saw. The, the last largest, largest lobster. Aviva, we need lobster powers to help us find the last largest lobster. Oh yeah, you get me some good wow facts on a lobster, rapido, and you'll have a new creature power in no time. Oh, I'm on the sea, and the sea's calling me. <laughs> ah, Jackie made this for me. In case I need to, I'll be able to smell underwater. <gasps> I too! One kilogram. This is more of the size we're used to seeing, before all the big ones were hunted out. Whoa, walks pretty slow for a creature with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight legs. Well, he does have to carry that big tail. Whoa! How do you do that? Got it! The big tail flicks, and the lobster shoots backwards. That big tail is full of muscles that flex and sweep the water forward that pushes the lobster backwards for a quick getaway. That is so cool. Powerful tail muscles contract, causing the fan-like tail to push water forward, instantly propelling the lobster backwards through the water. Fantastico! On it! I'm not interested in any witty bitty lobster that would fit into those twats. <laughs> I'm looking for the last largest lobster. Another one, same size. And neither one is gonna back down. <laughs> and I think we're gonna find out how they use their claws. The squeeze of a lobster is so powerful. If our hands were that strong, we could crush a walnut with just a squeeze. But why are the two claws different? One sleek and thin, one big and bulky. The big one, the crusher. That is used for crushing things. Well, the little one, the pincher, is used for ripping and tearing. Claws, claws, and more claws. I didn't know a lobster was so strong. A regular muscle head. <laughs> Finished. Coming at you, Jimmy. And teleport. Yes, a lobster power disc. <gasps> hey. Give me that. You're strong and stubborn. What am I gonna call you? Hmm. Uh, I wanna activate a creature power over here. <laughs> I'll name you Red Crush. See, he just wanted a name. <laughs> I think that's called a coincidence. You just don't understand the mind of a lobster. Okay, well here's something you'll understand. It's time to activate creature powers. <laughs> The tail, ready to rock it backwards. The claws, whoa, really strong. Lobster powers are awesome, right, Martin? Martin? Aviva, I think we've had a slight creature power suit malfunction. Uh, Martin's disappeared. No, 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 I was afraid of this. Chris transformed into the adult stage of the lobster, but Martin, he could be in planktonic larval stage one. Planktonic larval stage two, or maybe even three, or in the benthic stage. Uh, come again? Slow down, Aviva. Take a breath. <sighs> okay, okay. The lobster we all know, that's what Chris's power suit transformed into. But first, a mother lobster lays thousands of eggs which hatch into little lobster larvae, like this. These are planktonic, meaning they float in the water and are on their own the moment they hatch. Then the lobster larvae transforms into this. It doesn't really look like a lobster just yet, but then it goes into the benthic stage and it hides in the rocks on the sea bottom where it becomes a full-grown lobster. It's called the life cycle. 
Life cycles are so complicated to program. Martin's creature power suit must have malfunctioned and transformed him into one of those. Chris, Martin's teeny tiny. He must be floating in the water right around you. Do you see him? No, all I see is water. Wait a second. It's a slightly cloudy water with a greenish tinge. Of course, it's the planktonic soup full of tiny plants and animals. Martin's more than just mini. Martin's microscopic. Hello, anybody? Are you out there? Oh, great. My creature pod malfunctioned too. I have no communications. <sighs> okay, so I'm in a larval stage of the lobster. The only problem is lobster larvae apparently can't move. Well, actually I can move. It's just that I'm not going anywhere. And I'm too small to be seen. Chris, wait, I'm right here. shaft open. Now, time to start heading up. Here goes. Oh, I need some water. A person could get heat exhaustion out here. Only a sip at a time. Can't drink seawater. But I can cool off with it. Ah. Uh oh, a shark! Uh oh, a shark! Huh? Zach, I think I'm seeing things. With you lost at sea, I am the greatest inventor on Earth. <laughs> Get it? Because I'm on Earth? Land? And you're on water? <laughs> no, no, no! Ugh, I am seeing things. That's what can happen when you're lost at sea and you have heat exhaustion. I've got to find a way out of here. Hello? Anybody? Phew. No shade. A dinghy with no oars. I can't go anywhere. But at least I've got you guys. Hey, I've got an idea. <laughs> it's working. My giddy foul flapper is gone. <laughs> Jim, I'm still here. Huh? Who, who said that? I did, Jimmy. Controller. Controller? <gasps> I could use my creature power suit to get off this island, make it to land, and get help. Oh, what good's a creature power suit without any creatures? These look like burrows. Could there be a creature in these holes? I sure hope I am where I think I am. Okay, I'm out. But now what? I just hope somebody finds me before the Tortuga sinks to the bottom of the sea! Of all the places to be stranded, 
A one tree island. I'm the climbing brother. And I can't even climb my way out of this one. Oh, I could be stuck here forever. I think I see something moving. Oh, a puffin. Now you're a little seabird, aren't you? A little seabird that is a long distance flyer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that waddle. Love that waddle. <laughs> hey, wait, where are you going? Uh, I, I don't have a puffin power disc, and I, even if I did. <gasps> oh, now I don't have a puffin. 